Coach D. What's happening, brother? You're back. Ready to rock it. Yeah, we're here for the whole day, man. That's we're going we're we're, we're, we're gonna to share a lot of, lot of health, body, mind. Just goodness, man. People are going to start training more because of you. People in the trades. I'm just going to send them to you. They're going to they're gonna say, you know what? The same I, way I just call you when I got a question. That's right. That's, that's right. all I'm going to do is I'm going to send, go to Coach D. That's Coach it. D will take care of you. And Happy to it. help them out. Happy to help them out. On today's show, we want to, on the last show, we talked a lot about the body, about the coaching, about routines, about a bunch of stuff. So More exercise based. Check it out. Check out that last show. That's totally worth the hour to check it out. It will change your life. So it's really yeah. important. And make sure you share it with friends and family, man. We've got to keep telling people about the show. You know what? If, if, if there's an issue, just tell them that there's an issue, man. Just yeah. tell them that there's something wrong and you should solve it. Do something about it. Yeah. But let's start talking about today's show, food. You got it. Us, like, there's a lot to talk about here. We're going to try to jam pack it in the next hour. We want to talk a lot about good and bad foods. We know that there's a lot of crap out there. We know yeah. that everybody is just so easy to go to the bad, so hard to keep with the good. So over to you. Let's talk about the good and the bad, first of all. So first off, we're talking food, okay? And we need to be real with people, and we need people to stop right now, wherever you're doing, and just tell yourself, do you have two eyes? Do you have a brain? And can you make a decision to say yes or no? If, if everyone listening can say yes to this, it, it should be so much easier. I'm going to cut off all the baggage because a lot of people confuse boredom, confusion, bad habits, stress, pain, emotional baggage with food. And when you break it down, Good foods, if you're going to start off and you said, Dimitri, I can't afford your program. I can never join a gym. I can never hire a trainer. Let's, let's scale back. One, you should be eating naturally non-processed foods, things that don't come in a package, high nutrient, dense quality foods. We're going to break them down. And we're going to go into talking about um, the reasons why people binge. But first, you want to make sure that you're looking at foods that if you were to leave out on the counter, they're going to go bad in a week. Okay. Fruits. Not leave out on the counter and yeah. it's perfectly fine after Packaged a cereal, yeah. your granola bars. And I'll just know. be honest with you too. Like, honestly, Dimitri, when I go grocery shopping, I spend more time thinking about what yeah. I want to get yep. than actually getting what I'm putting it's into the cart. the proper the cart. way to do it. Like, I'm thinking about everything that's going into that cart because everything that's going into that cart is going inside me. I think when people are looking at foods and, and, what's good and what's bad, they need to understand the three macronutrients. And I believe that's slide 31, if we're going to start with that one. But we're talking, if you're starting off and you've never had any type of education with food, you need to know there's three macronutrients, which are going to be like the three building blocks. I call them Legos, okay? The three Legos nutrition. And the first one is going to be your Here protein. There we go. There we go. So first thing is going to be pro, um, protein. Go back one up. There you go. There it okay. is. Okay. All right. So I use protein first as a macronutrient, and I want you to forget everything you've ever heard about food today and just focus on these next three slides. One is the macronutrient protein. What is it used for? You're building connective tissue. You're building strength. You're boosting your metabolism. You're, you're boosting your, your, your strength, your immune system. Protein has got nothing to do with weight loss. Protein will help build tissues, sustain tissues, give you strength to be anabolic, but protein isn't a weight loss game. Protein is a staple. When you eat proteins, it keeps you fuller, longer. If I'm having a meal and I'm having a six ounce piece of salmon and a big salad and some Caesar uh, and some vegetables on the side, because I had that massive piece of fish, it's going to keep me healthy longer. Okay. When you're looking at protein, you want to tell yourself, when am I going to have them at every meal? That's a rule. Okay, with each meal. How much? For a male, you can have two palms worth. For a female, one palm worth. If you want to make it really, really easy, okay? What are the best types of proteins? Okay, well, lean proteins are obviously going to be higher in protein. You want to go with your, your ground beef, chicken, turkey, bison, venison. Your white meats, such as your chicken, turkey, and fish, those are going to be lower in fat, lower in saturated fat, okay? And you can eat them more frequently. Do we not want, I'm, I'm speaking for men, fat in our diet we do we want a lot of really really good fat and if you're going to be having some fat that comes with your meats it's okay we don't want to have fat that comes from fried foods chips trans fats 
packaged foods, that's garbage. When someone's going to go off a poutine, I'd rather you have mama's potato that she chopped up like in the olden days. Yeah, she fried them, but it's a potato that was chopped up. Not put a little bit of pepper on yeah, there. Yeah, you know? not the poutine, the fries that's been fried in like cheapest lard. Then it's covered with cheese, the cheapest cheese, not real cheese. Then it's covered with all these ingredients and bacon bits and all this stuff that sits in packages. So protein's your main one. Now, if you're saying, Dimitri, I don't like having meat. Okay, no problem. If you're going to remove red meats and stick with the white meats, it's going to be better. You got your dairies, your eggs, your Greek yogurt, your cottage cheese, your goat's cheese. Then you also have your beans. Beans are a mixture because beans contain protein and carb. If you looked at one bean, if this microphone was a bean, a quarter would be protein, three quarter would be carb. Now it's a complex carb, it's a great carb, it's a high fiber carb, but you can't say that beans and chicken breast are the same thing. Salmon and kidney beans are two different properties. One is gonna give you 35 grams of protein or 30 grams of protein, maybe one gram of fat and maybe no carb. The other one's gonna give you nine or 10 with 20 carb. Not that they're wrong. Supplement wise, a protein supplement is gonna be great. Whey protein, casein protein, milk proteins, and then you have your plant-based proteins and so forth. So protein, one gram of protein gives you four calories. If you're not eating enough protein throughout the day, get ready to lose muscle, get ready to be starving, get ready to have no energy in the gym, get ready for your metabolism to slow down, and get ready to binge because protein is the first base building block. When you're building a home, there's the base of the bloody home. There's a structure. That's your protein, okay? Let's go to the next macronutrient, carbohydrates. Now, go back up one. Perfect. So now carbohydrates are what give us energy. Yeah. This is what makes you gain weight, lose weight. But carbohydrates it, turn into sugar. Yes, but carbs are what people should care about. There's three macros, protein, carbon, fat. Every meal needs a protein, carbon, fat. However, the carb is the only Lego that you can manipulate because the carb comes in three different cousins. The first cousin is a fiber-rich carb, the best type. Vegetables, broccoli, kale, spinach, carrots, tomato, mushrooms, peppers, all the vegetables are gonna be great, and your fruits, especially fruits with skin on them, okay? So the first cousin, fiber-rich, the best. Why? They're natural products. You can't get broccoli and leave it out for two weeks, it's gonna go bad. Yeah. When can you have them? Any time of the day, vegetables, except for fruits you wanna watch based on body type. So if fruits I, you wanna probably stay in the middle of the day. Middle of the day, morning, after a workout. If it's gonna be later on at night, if, it's a, if you're gonna choose between a bag of chips and an apple, go for the apple. Yeah. But if you're trying to shred up and lean up, do we really need an apple at 10 o'clock at night or nine? No. no. I can have a protein shake with some spinach and some peanut butter and get away with it. Now, I recently just, on the apples thing, I just recently read something about how there's that, there's a coating now on apples that you have to really wash those oh, apples. I heard about that. Okay, I just, so I've been washing apples now and I just because I don't, and, and it's it's kind of funny. My neighbor went to a farmer's market, like his, like a friend's farm and it's brought different me. different story there. Different story. And I was like, it was a much better apple. I it's was, like when you go to Europe, I went to yeah. Italy with my family and yeah. the tomatoes were like, it's I'd pay there. 20 bucks for a tomato if I had to. Yeah. Because they're so juicy and so, you know, natural. And tip, when you're looking at vegetables, if they look perfect or they're really, really big, they're injected with something. Yeah. Because real tomatoes, they're, not supposed to be they're gonna be a yeah. little wobbly. They're gonna have some, you know, dysformia to them, natural, okay? Now, number two cousin is starchy foods. Whole starchy carbohydrates, sprouted grain. I don't care if it's a bread, pasta, potato, yam, pumpkins, quinoa, oats, long grain rice, barley, wild rice. I love wild rice, black rice, millet, buckwheat, pita, laffa bread, crackers, anything that is a whole grain based versus the white and refined are better for you. Now, when can you have these bad boys? Depends on your body type. Every human, every body type should have them at lunch, guaranteed. Now, dinner time, it's, it's based on your program. If you're gonna go to the gym at six or seven, you're done your workout, fine. Half cup, three quarter cup based on your body type. Now for breakfast, this is where I, I disagree where mesomorphic and endomorphic people should not be having breads, oatmeals, um, starchy carbs for breakfast because it's like dumping a big log in a fire first thing in the morning. Yeah, You're trying to burn off 25 pounds of fat on your gut. Why are you throwing toast and eggs for breakfast? Now, toast with tomatoes and some Greek olives and a little bit of you know some sea salt and some olive oil, 
There's no carbohydrate. You're fueling your body with the vegetable carb because, again, they're manipulated. Carbs can be either fiber, starchy, or refined. And you're having your fat. So that's the second type of carb. The third one is the refined one, the garbage one. Pastries, cakes, cookies, candies, donuts, croissants, chocolate, ice cream. Now pay attention. Man, As I that. say look these, everyone eats them. <laughs> Processed foods, soft drinks, pops, all fruit juices, garbage. Parents, if you're buying your kids juices and they say not from concentrate, they're all shit. It's all garbage. Okay. Um, dried fruits. Now dried fruits are really, really good because they are natural and healthy. If you said, bro, I'm really hungry. I need a snack. I'm going to have some raisins versus a bag of chips. Great. However, the sugar content is going to be much, much higher because there's less water in that item and you're getting it really, really dried up so that the, all that sugar in there. Now, they're not bad for you, but they're going to have higher sugar content. It doesn't mean if you said for lunch, instead of me having a cup of rice, can I have a half cup of some dates or some raisins on my salad? No problem. So again, middle of the day, never at night. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now when people understand these are the three Legos to carbohydrates, eating energy should be based on that little, the turtle and the rabbit. And you got to tell yourself, okay, in the morning, I'm going to go to the gym and work out. Do you want to gain weight? Yeah. How much? 15, 20 pounds. Go eat a whole starchy food. You need a slow carbohydrate. You need energy. You want to lose 20 pounds? Don't need carbohydrates. You can have vegetable carbs with your breakfast because the release of energy is going to be slow and long or fast and quick. And we do not want to have fast and quick. That's why we crash. Yeah. Typical breakfast, double, double coffee. So you got cream with the sugars and the sugar in the coffee, bagel or toast, cream cheese, butter, cream cheese. There's no protein. Yeah. Whereas if you had a small piece of salmon, some luck slices and some tomatoes and some olives, amazing. Omelet with some um, chopped up vegetables, stir fried, and a little bit of nuts. Amazing. If Angelina said, I'm going to have a can of tuna with mayonnaise, and I'm going to dip some celery sticks into it, and I'm going to have some olives on the side. Amazing, especially for people who want to lose body fat, because you're tricking the body and saying, listen, I'm going to give you a meal. I'm not going to give you carbs as energy. I want you to suck fat for energy off my body. But if we go to the next slide now, which is going to be the fat, this is going to give us slow energy much, much long-term. Fat's got nine calories per one gram of carb, okay? And you have your saturated fats, which typically come from meats, monosaturated and polyunsaturated. Fats help give the body energy, protect our organs, support cell growth, um, keeps cholesterol and blood pressure under control. Remember, if your diet is full of garbage, fried, packaged foods, and you're always eating out, Everything's fried. Everything's packaged. Your heart is going to build up with garbage plaque. And now your blood pressure is going to increase because if this is your artery, instead of having a nice clean pipe to, to get blood going in and out, you're clogging that shit up. Why? Because you're making the wrong choices of food. So you want to make sure you're looking at the monosaturated or the polyunsaturated fats. In a rule of thumb, this one of the Legos, you should be having one thumb for a female or two thumbs for every male, for every meal. And now you can be like, well, really? I got to have nuts at every meal? Yes. Pumpkin seeds? Yes. Olives? Yes. Eggs? Yes. Why? Well, if you're not giving your body one of the three macros, there's a, dis there's a deficiency. Yeah. You can't put up a brick wall with the brick and only one type of the mix that puts it together you need all three or you can't make a certain color on the wall with two paints you need three so this is the biggest problem that people start with they don't know the macronutrients and now they want to diet well really i could teach anyone on this podcast today if you're going to be having a meal for weight loss every meal needs protein carbon fat okay your first meal is going to be protein vegetable fat your second meal is going to be protein starchy carb and fat your third meal can be protein, fruit, and fat. And your last meal can be protein, vegetable, fat. Same thing. So you're basically eating the same macros for every meal. The only thing you're changing is the carbohydrate. Yeah. And that's the problem. Now, if you go to the other slide that I have in terms of binging, this is a real problem. And I think it's called, um, where are we here? That was number... 
number number 10 yeah the 10 reasons most of us binge eat okay now binging is a massive problem whenever i see people that are 100 pounds overweight it's not that they have a problem with food a they do not exercise and b they suffer from binging cycles because to get 200 300 pounds overweight takes work bro it's not like oh, i'm gonna feel bad for you you know you have bad genes no it's sitting down and smashing a whole pizza yeah. a milkshake a bag of cookies and then going sitting on the couch for five nine hours as sad as that is they made the effort to get to that point it's a, it's a reality and you know unfortunately i love going to the u.s i love all my u.s friends and my affiliates but when i go to the u.s i see way different um society and 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 well, the you go food, to grocery the portions, the portions you yeah. buy your gatorade and the gatorade's like five times bigger than the one you in canada don't need all this stuff or right? it's like you know buy five chocolate bars and you get this the discount so binging happens first from pain or pleasure okay we find pain or pleasure in the wrong foods that picture of someone with the bag with the french fries right there hey man i eat fries too once in a while they taste good with some ketchup some gravy on the side some feta cheese if you want to go greek style but a lot of us at that moment are saying you know what I'm, I'm craving right now something chocolatey screw it i'm gonna have the bar so they go for the pleasure the temporary pleasure of the food and they have that regret afterwards how does one feel after they do that like how did, that doesn't that, when the dopamine the, runs out and yeah. they feel like shit yeah, i'll the, tell you because no matter what people lie about oh well, i don't care i live my life to enjoy it it's bullshit when you go back to the mirror, you look at yourself in the mirror, you're, you're, you're not happy. You feel it. You, you feel sluggish. You feel weird. Because that glucose went right up, yeah. spiked your body's glucose. Your body produces insulin from your pancreas. The body takes that and removes it out, and now you start crashing. Okay, They don't prepare the foods. I came here today. I trained in the morning. I had a shake. I came here. I have some fruits. I have some nuts. I got some extra food. I, I plan to bring it. When you, you prepare don't, every morning? Um, nighttime. Nighttime, you when I wake up in the morning, I just want to grab it, put it into containers. When you cook in, we're going to talk about food prep in, in, in a little bit. Yeah. But when you cook in bulk, it's much easier. Just separate everything out. Stress. So people come Huge. home, they're stressed out. It's either a beer, I'm going to smoke a joint, I'm going to have a cigarette, a shot of whiskey, or I want a bag of chips. I want a bag of sweets. Sweets. Yeah. Okay. Boredom. A lot of people binge because they're bored and they don't get it. Watching TV at nighttime. Just think of the cycle. From 7 to 9.30, if you're at home watching TV, when was the last time you could wake up or go to the fridge, open it up, and you had one plastic container with celery and fennel washed, one with some tuna with mayo pre-made, some boiled eggs, some Greek yogurt with some nuts. If you don't have that ready to go when you're bored, you're going to eat shitty foods, okay? Because uh, they make shitty foods ready to go. Yeah, man. It's all in package, brother. Yeah. It's, you got to make a no, salad. It tastes nice, easy. but they you got to actually easy. sit there and prepare it. They make so it why easy. not prepare a massive container full of washed vegetables so they're ready to go? Okay, poor influencers. That's your circle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man, your circle. The five people you they want with. you to be a part of them. They yeah. don't want they don't want to be told to be a part of you. Or they're under the influence. That's another. So thing when was the last time when you were a little buzzed and a little drunk and you smashed a pizza by yourself or you went and had that dessert? Which typically, if you weren't under the influence, you'd be like, "Yo, man, I'm on my path." Yeah, and that's why people got to be pay attention to if they're going to be having food. Unstable blood sugars. This is probably one of the most important ones because people that are fasting or they skip breakfast and they're you know 220 pound male, a structured body. Is going to go do a, a laborious job or sit down and do a computer job. They skip food. They don't eat till 12. If they don't have their, 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 their meals prepared, they're going to binge and eat something that's, first of all, they're going to have a meal. And then because they're hungry, they're going to keep eating yeah. to fill themselves up. Hormonal imbalances, menstrual cycles. We all know that when women go through that time, my wife, I love her. She it loves ketchup it. chicks. It, yeah. it affects it. It sure. affects it. Um, we're also addicted. Like my son who's nine, I can give him 15 bucks. He can go into a store. He can blow 15 bucks on chocolate and sweets. And it's sugar. It's a drug. It's legal. If I said, go to the go to the drugstore and go buy cocaine or go buy heroin, he can't. So it's so legal and they put it everywhere. When you're in, in the shopping stores and you're going to pay, there's aisles of candies and sweets. So poor people, they're hungry. They haven't eaten. Always at, they're pissed off. At, at child height, eh? Yes. Eye level. Yeah, man. Always. So they're in lane. They buy this. They buy this. They go home and eat it, right? Um, 
we're addicted to it. Okay, culturally accepted. Okay, yeah. people like to sit down. I don't care if you're Jewish, Greek, Italian, Jamaican, Asian. They sit down for family dinners. No, it's okay. We're gonna eat today. Don't worry. Manja, manja. My, my uncle Francesca's. Uh, you know. This guy, Ernesto, I love the guy. Every time we're eating, mania di me, mania. And I'm, I'm like, I already had a full plate. Eat again. So our cultures make us eat more, yes. right? And then the most important one, we think we can get away with it. Can't. People are f silly. Can't. You know what's funny is the older you get, the faster you feel it and see it on you. Yep. The, mis the mistake that you, the misstep. Yeah. Sorry, the misstep that misstep. you made, the faster and easier you see it on you. So to me, these that mirror thing again. The mirror. It comes the back to day, the mirror. The next day in the morning. So because of these reasons, and because people don't know the protein, carbon, fat rules, or just like, if they would, if, if, if we were taught that in grade three, and kids could memorize what a protein, carbon, fat is, our society would not be obese. Do you not find it sad that you look at it now? You've got kids in school. Yeah, I man. don't. But the thing is, the, the, the food portions that we were taught when we were at that age. Buddy, we had the how food wrong, groups, yeah, six how, to 12 I, carbs uh, and... Majorly wrong, majorly wrong then, right? But now we're trying to correct it. It's getting it. better. I think the Canadian Food Guide yeah. has changed. I know that they've, they always followed the American Food Guide, which again is not, not any yeah. better. But when it comes down to it, um, there's a big loss in society because kids today are going home and don't know how to make a meal because their parents don't teach them. Well, if the parents don't know and they don't get a coach or pay money to learn, it's a nasty cycle. They get nannies or they get people to make them or they buy the food. So I'm still surprised that because, you know, I, I've told you this before. I'm a huge fan of blue zones and the different and there's Greek, Italy, U.S., Japan to yeah. begin with. Um, and it's funny that with Japan and the blue zone is that they have the highest amount of elderly over 100 years yeah. at population. But they're also the one country that has the fastest growing obesity rate. Really? Because the amount of American food and franchises oh, yeah, that yeah, are going yeah, into yeah, yeah. Japan and all that youth is eating that yeah. now. And so it's funny is that, uh, you know, two, three generations getting up to that level, they're probably going to lose that status of having the most amount of old people healthy, living healthy. If you're talking generations, I don't want to sound bad, but when I met my wife, the one thing I fell in love with her about was she's a cook, man. She knows how to cook. And a lot of young ladies today and young males they don't find cooking cool because no. they can order bloody food in their app so if you don't know how to cook i can make a magical meal with a few tomatoes give me a small piece of meat give me some onions and i can make a magical meal so they're not learning that so that's one of the major problems when it comes to meal prep the second item meal prep is a staple and non-negotiable in my family sundays and wednesdays don't bug us especially sunday nights if we're having family come over they know there's going to be Eight steaks in the barbecue, 10 chicken breasts, some sausages. There's my daughter's opening up some cans of tuna, five cans of tuna, mixing with mayo. We're boiling 12 eggs. We're making some quiche in the oven. We're washing. And you notice how I said the protein? I started with that one. All that protein. Because you need to always look at food as my three Lego protein, carb, fat. And that's the first staple. Because... People are so foolish when they try to say, well, I don't want to have a high protein diet. I just want to be, you know, healthy. Okay, so you're trying to tell me you want to be lean. You want to, you want to mimic an athlete or a, 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 a f sexy fitness model that's lean. Well, those guys eat majority of protein, healthy foods. They train a lot and their tissue of fat is low. So you need to copy that. So you need to have a meal plan that's higher in protein because you're damaging muscle tissue. And you're trying to grow muscle tissue first. Does the family go grocery shopping or is it uh, left to you and, and mom? No, I, I, we go together with the kids. Okay, yeah. But either I go one time or my wife. I usually do the proteins. I'll go to the butcher. Because you're educating the kids on... Oh, yeah. Go like, to here, grab this. Not only that is I'll, I'll purposely, when I'm in the aisle, they want, they want cookies. My yeah, son wants cookies. Course, I'm okay. Course. Give me four boxes. Show me the back of them. And then people will look at me like, look at this father. So then I give them the nastiest look and I talk loud and I'm like, well, you see this got 19 grams of sugar, bro. This has got five. Which one do you want to have? Five, dad. Perfect. <laughs> so I want to show people that I don't care if they look at me weird. When I'm 75, I'll be doing jumping jacks and you won't. So uh, food prep should be one. For anyone listening, two designated days where you cook in bulk. Step number two. Protein, carbs, and fats, cook them in bulk. So your proteins will be ready to go. Carbohydrates now. Cook some wild rice, some yams. Cook some whole grain pasta if you want. You can make the pasta cold 
with some tomatoes, some feta, some olive oil, some cheese, some onions. You want to have the carbs in bulk ready to go. Or if it's potatoes, put them in the oven, put some carrots and some onions and bake them. You also want to have fruits pre-washed and you want to have your vegetables pre-washed as well. I don't mean you're spending 12 hours. We spend an hour and a half. Every Sunday, glass twice, of wine. Twice a week. Twice a week. Hour and a half. Because Sunday lasts me to Wednesday. Yes. And if anyone talks about, I don't want to eat leftover food because it's disgusting. Well, your gut's disgusting. The fact that you can't do 15, 25 push-ups with your kid is disgusting. The fact that your percentage of body fat is in the 30s and you're, you're younger than me is disgusting. So be the role model. So it takes us an hour and a half max. When we're done, we could literally feed a family of 10 in, in two minutes because if I want a salad, I open my container, I grab a handful of pre-washed lettuce, just like if you go to the restaurants or like to a bagel world or whatever you go, you grab your lettuce, your pre-washed lettuce, you got your purple cabbage salad diced up, your lettuce, your carrots. All you got to do is put dressing on it, saute a meat with some onions and some mushrooms, and then get your carb on the side and you're done. That's your meal. That's it. So if you pre, if you do food prep in, in, in bulk, it's ready for you. When you're looking at buying and spending money, if you have a hundred bucks, 55 bucks goes to protein, minimum 50 bucks. 30 bucks is gonna go to fruits and vegetables, 20 bucks to carbs, because carbs are cheap. You can buy a bag of rice, pasta, beans, bread, whatever it is, crackers, those things can last you for long, but your bulk needs to go to protein because again, half of it, huh? you're putting yeah, half because of it? you gotta, we gotta be realistic. If you're a vegetarian, I love you guys, vegans, I love you guys, but you need to make sure that your diet has a higher percentage of protein because you're, you're, you're damaging your body by training, especially if you're training at high levels. If you're doing cardio only, you're still working the legs, the chest, cardiovascular system, but if you're weight training and you're stressed out and you're busy, why not have it ready to go? Why not wake up in the morning and have some egg quiche omelets ready to go so the kids can grab one as a snack midday from school? So when you're starving at midnight, you can go get one. It's ready to go, Yeah, right? That's how the food prep works in my area. And then when it comes to packaging foods, I could literally get uh, um, four plastic trays here. And if it's someone that wants to lose weight, the first tray is going to be an egg omelet, tomatoes, Greek olives. Boom. Second one's going to be a protein shake, some celery, and some nuts. Boom. Lunchtime, some whole grain rice, some pasta, a piece of fish, and some broccoli. Boom. The next meal is going to be a little bit of a Greek yogurt and some pumpkin seeds. Then the last meal is going to be any type of veggie, any type of salad with your slab of protein on it or some beans on it. Done. There's there's four or five meals. To how um Made easy it. to go. Very easy so to go. Why, why are people, comp what is the, what's, what's on their shoulder that's telling them that this is like, I can't do this. There's no structure in their life. There's no time management. That's the problem. But they There's do no it in there every day. So if they're an office person or if they're uh, in construction or if they're uh, a PM or whatever, they structure everything else in their life. But, but there's a, there's a should and a must in this world. Okay? Yeah. I should be on time for work or I must be on time for work. It's two different things. Right. I should help my team and my staff and buy my wife flowers every once in a while, or I must. When people don't distinguish the difference between should and a must, your life gets cloudy and foggy. And then you, you go into vices, you go into pain, you go into self-talk, you know, you start looking at other people. Well, my family's, you know, overweight and we've been overweight all this time. So maybe we're just overweight family. Then you label yourself that. So then you start eating more shit, right? When it comes to diet, um, well, you touched upon a lot about diet, right? Yeah, so I, I like, like the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, I don't like going into diets that are so strict where they say you can't eat this. I just made a post on Instagram a few days ago yesterday saying when people cut out carbs completely, I saw that. Yeah. It's the stupidest thing. You need that energy. You need it. I don't mind if you want to limit your carbs to like 50 to 75 a day. But if you're not measuring how much you're eating and you're just cutting them out because you think it's going to work. But it's when too. It's when. Problem is that most people, and we're European. Yeah. We throw the, we, we grown up on carbs being placed when? At evening, at nighttime. Like, you know, when events, when you go out, when you get together, functions. Well, if you hang out with my, my family in Italy, they'll, they'll bring you a beautiful four or five course meal. And the first course is going to be your 
antipasto plates, some prosciutto, <laughs> some cheese, some olives, and then you got your plate of pasta as your beginner. Yeah. Then you got a plate of meat and potatoes. Then you got your salad. Then you got your fruit. So that's what I'm talking about cultural differences. Oh, yeah, it's 100%. Supplement wise, I think stick to basics. When you start looking like a pharmacy every morning, it's foolish. One, you need a, a basic multivitamin. Tip, I, I sometimes forget to have my supplements, but I'm eating six meals a day from all three food groups, so I'm getting the best from the food. But one, we're deficient in vitamin D. Yeah, We need a little multi because if you don't have your broccoli, your rapini, your, your, you know, your vegetables, your micronutrients, you're going to get that in there. The ones that are powerful are vitamin C because we're stressed. We're taxing our bodies. Our immune systems need it. And I would say, you know, go to 500 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams a day if you need it. If you're training really hard, you're hard, and you're sick even more. Um, fish oil, super important because so many people don't eat uh, the, the essential fatty acids in their diet. They don't eat nuts. I ask them, how often do you eat nuts? Oh, once in a while, I throw them on a salad. I eat nuts with every meal. I eat nuts every single day. It's like you, you got to have it's the, just the fats. a norm. There's containers everywhere. You just eat nuts. If you're older, past 40, um, and you have joint issues, glucosamine sulfate can help in chondritin. Those work together. Um, MSM helps for joint and bone damage. But other than that, I'm not a big, you know, vitamin D. Yes, we need vitamin D because we don't have a lot of sunlight. I'm not big into big supplements. The biggest supplement I would say to tell people to, excuse me, to buy is protein powder. That's it. So it's just a whey protein powder of some sort. And again, people will always try to, to test me and, well, you know, I should be, you should be healthy and eat real food. So I'm like, okay, so how many grams of protein do you eat a day? You weigh 180 pounds, you want to lose 50. Uh, well, I have maybe, you know, a bagel for breakfast. If the average person is not consuming minimum 0.7 grams to 0.8 of their body weight in protein, how the hell are you supposed to build muscle? I'm having 1.5. I'm having almost 250 to 300 grams a day. And I'm an ectomorph trying to maintain my weight at 195 at 44. So imagine if you're trying to build. So protein powder is great because one, it's helpful in between meals. We need to be eating more than three meals a day. Unless you're endomorphic, unless you're you know, really, really overweight and you've been eating poorly for many, many years, Break it down where you're, you have in between your lunch and dinner, that 12 lunch and 6 p.m. dinner time is the big gap. Have a bloody shake at 3 o'clock. I don't care if you're a bricklayer, you're an entrepreneur, you're a lawyer. You can easily take... It's a lot better than a double-double. That's it. Yeah. Take a container, have some powder in there, put some water, shake it up, get some nuts, you're good to go. Your body you, will appreciate it. Your body will absorb it. Your body... You'll see a difference. 100%. Yes. And... You got to remember, people, I, I, I laugh because I look at them and I'm like, so you want to get toned, but you don't want to get lean and, 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 and muscular. No, no, no. I'm like, well, there's no such thing as toning. Muscle either grows and increases in size, in anabolic, in, you know, in, in hypertrophy, or it shrinks with age in, catab in a catabolic state. Which do you want? Well, no, I want to build muscle. Okay, so you got to eat more protein. And that's the problem that even with women, it's hard sometimes to, to, to tell women because they're worried about bulking. Yeah. And women got to realize if you're bulking, it's because of your genetic type and how you're eating and training. It's not from what you're eating. It's from eating and training on your body. So I want to talk about intermittent fasting because that's a big thing, but there's a whole keto. There's all like, there's so, I guess yeah. there's fads. Yeah. Are we, are these blind fads where people are just telling them that I'm going to start this because so-and-so did it, had a huge result, so I'm going to start doing it. That, that's the problem now. And there's so many good marketers out there that promote the crap out of these things. Like um, Greg O'Gallagher, he's, he's, he's one of the best that, you know, promotes keto. Now, if I'm looking at the guy, he looks ectomorphic to me. He doesn't look like he's ever been overweight. Um, if you're following the keto diet, real keto diet is going to be like, you know, higher protein, five to 10% of your body, of, of your diet and carbs, and the rest was high fat. I tell people to follow a sensible diet and first understand your bloody macronutrients. Because if you're fasting, there's so many benefits of fasting, okay? Autophagy, cellular regeneration. Um, but again, it goes based on body type. And if you're 60, 80 pounds overweight, and you know that you binge at night, and you typically wake up and eat shit for breakfast. Perfect. Let's try some intermittent fasting for four weeks. 
Let's check your body comp. Let's see where you are. You're going to stop eating at eight. Great. You're an endomorph. Your metabolism is slow. I get it. I'm an ectomorph. I need fuel. I'm trying to gain weight. Or someone else that's active needs fuel. If someone had a chicken salad with some feta cheese on it at 1030 at night versus someone not eating, well, the chicken salad is going to take some time to digest. You may have a tiny bit of storage, but your body will utilize that, those, that, that energy. There's no carb in it. So people are so whacked up in the head where they will not eat for so many hours and then breakfast time comes and they skip it and they start eating at 12. But then guess what happens? They don't follow a proper fasting regimen. They don't have a nice Greek yogurt with a half cup of apple and some nuts. They don't have a tuna sandwich. They start binging. Yeah. So to me, that's where I don't like the fasting route. I don't mind trying it in the beginning. I've seen some clients get really, really good results. Um, I know a client actually, a mine that, you know, we work together and he actually fasted for 25 or 30 days. Seriously? Yeah, yeah man. And water he, fast or? Uh, he was, yeah, water, coffee, water. Wow. And he dropped a considerable amount of body of fat. Of course. But the challenge is sustainability, damn it. We don't want to live a lifestyle where we can't have some M&Ms once in a blue moon. Yeah. We need to be able to structure that in our program. So intermittent fasting can work for certain individuals. If you're an average Joe and you got to lose 15 pounds, do not fast. You're going to lose muscle tissue in the process. Cleansing, That's, I guess, is the same thing, kind of. Cleansing will, and this is the, the tricky one, all the holistic people, the naturopaths, all these spe specialists in nutrition, um, and I'm not saying this because I, I disrespect them, but I'm saying this because I have 27 years in the industry, and whenever I've met one, the first thing they do, and my wife's gone to one, is they start eliminating stuff. Because they're, they're, they want us, they want you to get quick results. So if I can get you five pounds of fat loss or just five pounds of weight loss in eight days, you're going to love me. Yeah, but you can do that on a cleanse over those days because you're not eating anything. So what happens is they remove <laughs> carbs, they remove dairy, they remove, you know, certain cheeses. And, and again, look at the Mediterranean diet. They're all kind. Look at France. Cheese, yeah, cheese, yeah, cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're healthy people. So cleansing... I take cleansing to the fact of, let's do an alcohol cleanse, bro. Let's Good do point. a drug cleanse. Yeah. Let's do a chip cleanse. Let's do a pizza Start cleanse. Start there. Let's do a 6 p.m. and on carb cleanse, damn it. Don't worry about taking supplements and all these bloody teas to cleanse your system. People are buying supplements and they're drinking fucking shakes, excuse my French, <laughs> for the first five meals of the day and they're eating these little bars. I lost seven pounds. Okay, how do you feel? Like shit. <laughs> Can you do 10 push-ups? I'm no, tired. I'm exhausted. Eat real nutrient-dense foods. That's the best way. And when you're cleansing, look at cleansing the poisons from your diet. So my poison will be pizza and dill pickle chips because I know that you put a pizza in front of me, I'll smash it. If I'm dieting, you put a pizza in front of me, I'll want to hit it. But if I'm in a cleanse, if I'm in that period, I'm in a set state, I'm not going to have it. Right, so that's what I think people should look when they come to cleansing. I, I like you know this. I do the cleanse once a year. I do the seven day water flash, but I do it as like you said earlier. That's great. It's a structure thing. It's once a year. Right? I prepare myself for yeah. it. I do it for the seven days. It's mental. I, I I'm a sick and twisted individual because while that seven days is going on and I'm not eating anything, I just go to TikTok and IG and I look at steak being prepared. I look at chicken being prepared and grilled and barbecue. That's I just you, I just I look at that because then I'm just savoring because I'm thinking about the eighth day and i don't get back on and just kill everything right i don't do that i slowly get back and i realize that my body has fixed itself has done certain things and now i need to continue that's delayed gratification that's bro. Exactly like i told it. you you can yeah. wait that seven eight days and enjoy it. even when people have um religious fasts i'm cool with that but i don't like people fasting for long periods of time to lose weight because if you're fasting because your, your diet is horrendously bad, perfect. An intermittent fasting is great for you. But just make sure during that time period, you're eating healthy foods because it doesn't make sense to stop eating for 12, 16 hours and then go buy McDonald's That's or get a crap. Subway. And also on that whole thing is that people are exercising or fasting or dieting or doing all their shit for the number on the scale. Yeah. Don't be chasing the number on the scale. 
Like I, you, you should be looking at your body in that mirror again. You should be looking at how you feel, how your body's reacting to everything. You, your body tells you what it needs. And also getting blood work done too, man. 100%. Because a lot of people that are fasting, again, there's deficiencies happening here. I can turn to you, a lot of men have deficiency in fat. They don't eat fat. They're not, they may put olive oil in their salad and all, but they're not having avocado, pumpkin seeds, uh, nuts, you know, cheese, salmon. They're not eating all the healthy fats they should be at every bloody meal. Yeah. So when you have that, you have issues later on. I want to talk a little bit about healing foods because there's a lot of foods out there that are, are good for you. Um, do you have a slide for that? Yeah, man. I got a slide for the 10. I made it last night for you guys. The 10 most. Here we go here. Um, I think slide 17. We start from 17 all the way through. Yeah. The 10 most popular. Well, 17 is going to show you the blood sugar storage. So if you want to go back to that one. Really yeah, there's quickly. that term, insulin resistance, man. So insulin, go back one slide to uh, number 17. So remember one thing. Here's the rule, okay? Muscle liver fat, MLF, not MILF, the way some guys like to think of the, the, the terminology <laughs> MILF. Gentlemen, close your testosterone doors. Yes. So your body is beautiful. When you overeat and you eat foods, step number one, higher in sugar, the, the body breaks down the food into glucose into your bloodstream, okay? Your brain's going to say, hey, What's going on here? Like, you know, step number one, you convert uh, food into glucose. Step number two, glucose enters the bloodstream. Step number three, pancreas produces insulin. So your brain's going to say, hey, Manny, you got way too much sugar in your blood, bro. Let's produce insulin. Think of insulin as like a police car. It's going to regulate hormonal levels and glucose levels in the blood. It's got a lot of other functions. But the primary main source one is it goes to the bloodstream like a police officer says, hey, you, 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 get out. We got to move you somewhere. And people think that insulin takes glucose out and burns it. No, it diverts it. So you're not type 2 diabetic and stuck with full blood sugar. It, so your blood sugar doesn't look like syrup. So when it removes it, it goes MLF, muscle liver fat. And if you're training, lifting weights, cardio, having regular sex with your spouse, you're active, your body will utilize the excess glucose to build some muscle and put some aside. But let's say we remove that scenario. Now you skip that. It's got to go through your liver, bro. So your beautiful liver gets stuck with all this extra glucose that stores as glycogen. It's going to hold it for emergency purposes. But after a while, you get fatty liver, man. Cirrhosis of the liver occurs. Your liver gets enlarged. And then it goes to fat. So if this happens one, two, three, four, five days in a row, the body goes, Manny, don't worry, bro. I know what you want to do. You're 30 years old, 35, 40. When you wake up, we'll take care of it. We'll put you on autopilot. And every time you eat, I'm going to store shit for you because you're spiking it up with high blood sugar. You're not having that breakfast with an omelet and tomatoes and olives. No glucose at all. Your body can take the vegetables, absorb them, utilize them, piss them out, take the protein, hold on to it, take the fat, use it as energy. What it's doing is it's spiking the blood sugar. Okay, let's go to storage. So it'll bypass the first two and go right to fat. Now go to the next slide, insulin resistance. We got, you know, persons eats high carb foods, the pancreas secretes insulin, cells resist insulin. So if every day one of your staff called and said, hey man, the house is on fire, house is on fire. And then when you got there, he's like, ah, I just gotcha. You'd be like, you know what, you bastard? The next time the house is on fire, I'm not going to show up. Yeah. So the body's the same way. When it produces so much bloody insulin, Either the insulin gets resistant, the cells don't absorb it, your blood sugar goes high, sugar stores as fat, fat. and then your body inflammation. Starts, yeah, man, inflammation in the joints. And you and, don't understand why you can't lose this weight. And you're like, well, what's happening? Well, bro, you're a yo yo system for your body. So if you go to the next slide here, <clears throat> insulin's essential hormone that allows glucose to, to enter the cells to help control, maintain blood sugar levels. Um, and we need it. Okay, when your cells are not responding normally, this is the pathological condition called insulin resistance. Okay, and metabolic syndrome, which is one of the biggest killers of men, we're going to end the show off with positivity. But metabolic syndrome, for anyone listening, is abdominal obesity for 35 inches or more for a female or 40 inches for a male, high triglycerides, triglycerides, high blood pressure, um, and insulin resistance. When you have one of three of these, 
Bro, you got metabolic syndrome. You are naturally going to kick off 10 years of your life expectancy. So if you go to the next slide now, eggs are known to be an excellent source of important nutrients for a healthy diet, including proteins, vitamins, minerals, and such as vitamin D, vitamin B12, and selenium. Okay, so again, a lot of people are like, should I buy all my supplements? Eat some bloody eggs every day, you're going to be good. I've, I've increased my egg consumption insanely. Just 100%. Boil the eggs or poach yep. the eggs, yep. and I'm eating so many more eggs now. Even as snacks. Yes. You know, two eggs and, and some vegetables for someone that wants I, to lose weight. I do weight. eggs and avocado. It's there you just, go. Boom. And it's, it's a nice protein, high fat yeah. uh, a meal with no carb in it, right? Um, so they did a study. By the end, they gave two people different types of eggs and one not, and there was one that reduced by nearly 5% insulin insensitivity. Olive oil, okay, there's many reasons for this. And they suggest that olive oil may inhibit carbohydrate digestion, which could lead to reduced insulin resistance as well. But go to the next one, broccoli. Okay, broccoli's great source of, broccoli's got more vitamin C than oranges, guys. Oh, I know that. Okay. Yeah. And it's a low in carbohydrate, it's got a low glycemic index. Many doctors suggest it for regular consumption, for diabetes. Broccoli's a great source of fiber. And, um, the great thing about it is when you break down to your GI system, it does not typically cause those dreaded insulin spikes that bread would do or pasta would do. Just be cautious of the broccoli and those massive crowns and on sale this week. It's and pumped up with all kinds of... Yeah, you're looking at a basketball and a crown and you're like going, why is the broccoli as big as a basketball? 100%. Like, I don't understand. And broccoli is great because you can steam it, yes. boil it, yes. bake it, eat yes. it raw. Yes. Salmon and beans, really, really good. Okay, omega fatty acids, um, they're good for sugar levels. They don't spike blood sugar levels. Beans are really, really high in fiber, and they also have a good mix of a little bit of carb, a little bit of protein. So they're really, really good for um, insulin resistance. Next one is avocados. Okay. I love avocados. Avocados, they're a fatty fruit. I can't believe they're fruit. I keep thinking they're fat, but they're a fruit. I, just, I love them. Um, I don't care what they're titled. There was a study they did where scientists fed a high fat diet to mice for two months, and they separated the mice into two halves and began adding the fat molecule to only half of their diets for an additional five weeks. And the mice that received the fat molecule in the second portion of the study gained more weight, slowly showed insulin and sensitivity. Okay. Wow. Next, we got turkey and chicken. Obviously, these are proteins. They're really, really good. Take the skin off. Um, they're, they're high in protein. They're very, very low in fat. Occasionally keep the skin on just to have a little bit of yeah, If you're going to barbecue it, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm talking about like even when I buy chicken, chicken that's already pre-made. Yep. I'll take off the nasty stuff and I'll leave a little bit on the side. Yeah. But it's definitely good to incorporate to lower blood sugar levels. Avoid the skin. Avoid deep frying it if possible. Bake it. Barbecue Bake it, it. Barbecue Stir it. fry it. Yeah. And then you have lastly, your nine is oatmeal and almonds. Okay. Now, oatmeal is a great food because it's a superfood. It's low glycemic, so it doesn't spike your blood sugar. Um, it's a high fiber content and vastly improves insulin sensitivity. Because if you have oatmeal, now, again, they say eat oatmeal for breakfast. But if you're someone that's endomorphic, that's trying to lose 50, 60 pounds, why the hell are we giving you any carb for breakfast? Yeah. Switch it with a vegetable. But if you're having oatmeal and you're mixing it for a snack or for lunchtime, contains proper um, beta glucans, um, glucans, which lower blood glucose level, reduce bad cholesterol levels. And you know, it's a great food. And then almonds, you can't go wrong, superfood. I, I love almonds. Are there any nuts that you should not touch? Peanuts are the, the lower, they call it the cheaper nut. Okay. Um, every other nut is fine. Cashews, Cashews, Brazil. Brazilian nuts. Okay, sunflower. Sunflower seeds, good. Yeah. Pumpkin seeds are the, pumpkin, pumpkin seeds are really seeds powerful. Are better, yeah. A quarter cup of pumpkin seeds got 11 grams of protein, man. Yeah, I know. And you want to always buy your nuts without salt. Yeah, unsalted, unsalted all the time. The way Roasted to go. is fine, unsalted. That's the way to go. All right. And then you have a really good topic last. This one I can't. So I want to end this show, yeah, because, I mean, is it possible to be healthy and order healthy? 100%. Uber Eats and eating out. It, 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 there, there are choices. There are, you know. 100%. And I, I tell all professional businessmen, CEOs, because there's two different crowns of the, of, of the, of the king here. There's the labor person that does a laborous job that does hard work and at the end of the day when they want to eat they're like you know what screw you man i had a hard day's work i've been bricklaying um doing a drywall electrical whatever your trade is i deserve a big meal i'm gonna smash a burger and fries and i'm gonna have my coke okay you could easily go for a burger ask them do you have a whole green bun sure boom can i have 
lettuce, vegetables, a bunch of vegetables. And can I get a salad on the side? We don't have salad. Okay, perfect. Can you do me a favor? I'll pay four bucks, whatever it is. Just give me a bunch of the condiments on the side. Mm. And they'll look at you like, for real? Yeah, because I'll eat it myself. And that way you can still order out and eat healthy. Then there's the business clientele, the corporate clientele. These are the guys that and gals that sit down, no laborious work. It's all mental work. I get it. Meetings, corporate functions, Zooms, whatever. And then because their lifestyle with work is all about entertaining, they bring in the lunches and they just order food in, in, in big portions. and They just eat, 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 and drink alcohol. So there's, there's two negatives. When you're ordering food, when you're eating food, when you're thinking about food, go back to my three Legos, protein, carb, and fat. Look at the time of day. Is it nighttime or is it lunchtime? It's lunchtime, okay. I want to lose 75 pounds. Perfect. They brought pizza in. They brought sandwiches with tuna. They brought some vegetable dips, and they brought some cakes. Okay, I'm going to have a slice of pizza. It's lunchtime. I'm going to get a tuna mix and maybe a piece of chicken and some broccoli. Boom, there's my lunch. I'm not going to have the juice. I'm not going to have the cake because those are excess. If you're ordering foods, there's freshy, there's all kinds of Mediterranean places. Even like worst case, if you put a gun to my head and you sent me to Harvey's or one of these fast food joints, I would literally tell them, give me a double burger, give me chicken because I know your beef is garbage. If you're going to a real burger place, you get a burger, but give me a double chicken burger on the side, give me a salad, give me a sparkling water to go. Give me a soda water. When you say the meat is garbage, it's all fillers. And yeah, man. Like, like if that, you're right? going to a burger joint that specializes in burgers, they're making ground beef burgers, yes. and they're, those are the good Not kinds. Not frozen of and all yeah. that crap. Yeah. Because again, you take McDonald's and you leave a Big Mac combo outside, it's going to sit there for like two weeks and look exactly the same. It will not mold. It just... I know. It looks like Scary. a fresh burger. Scary. Fries can sit there for like three weeks. Scary. So people are ingesting that and they're feeding their kids that. And they're like, ah, it's okay. It's once in a blue moon. No, you liar. It's been three times this week and once on the weekend. So once in a blue moon is fine, but you got to have your balance. And when so, it comes to eating out, always remember... You can read the bloody ingredients. You can yeah. look at the calories. If you're ordering, we sometimes order on Fridays from Milestones. And I'll get the portobello mushroom pasta with the chicken breast. I love it. But my wife will get the portobello uh, chicken breast and she'll get vegetables on the side and she'll get yams on the side. Or you can mix and match. You can tell them, do me a favor. Can I get my Greek souvlaki dinner with no rice? Can I get vegetables instead of the, the potatoes? Can I get my salad dressing on the side, fat on the side, so I can add as much as I want? And then you don't need to get the dessert or you don't need to drink. As soon as you drink pop or juice, guys, you might as well put a gun to your head. It's just pure sugar. It's pure sugar. It's the stupidest thing you could do because your whole meal goes down the drain. So there are ways. All you got to do is contact them. Go online, speak to somebody from the restaurant, and go, this is how I want to... Maybe even start the conversation by saying, listen, I apologize. I'm going to modify your, your meal a little bit yeah. because I need it to suit my lifestyle. You're paying. Like yes. when I go to restaurants, I'm going to ask the questions. And my wife's like, oh my God, here we go again. And I'm like, okay. For me, it's always when I look at the dinners and I ask them, how many ounces in your beef, your chicken, your fish? And she'll be like, are you for real? I'm like, you've been married to me for like, you know, almost <laughs> 17 years now. I want to know which piece of the thing that I'm going to buy has got the highest ounces of meat because I need protein. So if it's a six ounce, seven and a 12, I'll go for the 12. And a lot of restaurants have the nutrition labels on them. I think even Tim Hortons has they it. They have to. Everybody has to do that now. So you can just look at it and just say, okay, 750 calories for a wrap. Wow, that's huge. Is there one for 350? Yes. I'm going to buy a strawberry shake that's a summer shake. 450 calories. That's crazy. Get a ball of Perrier. There's nothing in it. Simple and easy. Or go some Pellegrino. Yeah, that's, baby. That's my choice. And so I find there's too many bubbles in the per uh, Perrier. There you go. I a little less sodium it. too. But yeah, that's exactly it. But I, I actually just want to, um, I just want to end this on saying, what you're eating doesn't matter if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and above, or whatever. What you're eating is going to determine possibly how long you're going to live. Hundred percent. Not only just the you're, length and how you're going to live. First of all, it's length, quality, performance, and the mirror, bro. Like you cannot keep looking in the mirror year after year, decade after decade saying, 
wow, I used to fit into that black skinny dress or, you know, my jeans used to be a 35, 36, now I'm a 45, 50. So if you don't care about what you're going to be like when you get older, then if you're in your 30s and 40s and even if you're 20s, whatever, go go find your walker store and find the best walker you want. Or if you're a tradesperson, build your walker right now and weld yeah, it together. Get it all ready Get for Get your yourself. wheelchair ready. Because I don't want to have a wheelchair. I don't want to have a walker. I don't want to have assistance. I don't want to have anything. I want to be vibrant. Yeah, and healthy. if you have kids, shame on yeah, you. Yeah. If you have kids and your lifestyle is shit. It's rubbing off of them. First of all, for any guy out there listening, when you tell your kids, go get me a beer, shame on you. When you're eating like a pig, shame on you. The kids are looking up to you. Yeah. When you're a, a, a mom and you spend more time on your nail, your hair, your purse versus teaching your little girl or boy how to cook a meal, shame on you, damn it. That's so true, huh? Because they really don't know how to cook. I drag my kids, even my nine-year-old, and I force them to sit there and watch me make a meal. And my daughter, she's fully into it. She'll make all, every morning, she's downstairs making different omelets. She's making different foods on the weekends. I can leave her alone. She can cook for herself. She's 15. So if you're a parent, you have the sole responsibility to make that child see the best version of what they can be. If not, they grow up with dysfunction, they grow up with trauma and they grow up with negativity and they see your habits. They see you're a slob, you don't exercise, you drink. You For men watching sports, it makes me nervous that guys can spend so much time idolizing athletes, wearing their jerseys with their names on their back and, and memorizing the team, the stats. Meanwhile, you're like, bro, do you know what a protein is? No. <laughs> Why don't you spend some time reading a book about food versus worrying about, you know, Los Angeles Raiders or whatever hockey team? Yeah, but all these athletes and their regimen, like the, the, what they do, sure, they're wealthy. They have all the trainers. They have all but the that's means. that's their job. But that's their job. You're, you're going to work as a laborer or as, a, as, a, as a, a technician, whatever you do, and you're spending time idolizing these people. They're not make, you're not making money from them. So why aren't you taking the time to make yourself better? Be your own athlete, man. Be 100%. your own athlete, seriously. But again, if you got kids, shame on you. If you're not saying after this podcast, I'm going to go for a jog with my kids. I took my son for a three point, uh, almost a 4K run last week, and the poor kid almost puked lungs out. And I'm like, let's go. And I'm yelling at him. Cars are coming by. And I'm, yeah. And I'm, I'm telling him at the end, this is life. You need to do shit when you don't want to do shit. You need to be in front of someone that's better than you to aspire to become like him. And at the end of the run, he goes, thanks, Dad. I really appreciate that. All right, Coach D, we're done with this one. What's Got the it. deets again? If anybody want to reach out to you and actually get a better understanding of all these, the food tips and everything 100%. Like that, I'm happy to help you out. Reach out to you at, at the At Dimitri Giancoulis on either Facebook or Instagram. Go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe today, Dimitri Giancoulis. I'll give you a bunch of educational information. And if you're stuck and you want to learn about your body type, once you message me on Instagram, just say, heard you from Manny's show. I'll give you some time to sit down with me over a Zoom call. And I want to just educate you on <coughs> where you are, where you want to get to, and what's the gap. That's super important, the gap. There's a really good book called The Gap. And finding out what you need to do to go from A to B. If you can collapse that time frame, you live a happier, more wealthy, more appreciative lifestyle. Thanks, man. On our next show, we're going to talk about injuries. Let's do it. That's huge. All right. Talk we are out of here, man. Peace.